WFMR presents the award-winning program Focus 96.5. Interviews with interesting people that may touch your life. Why do you go to a doctor? Well, because you're sick or feel something might be not quite right and the doctor probably can fix it. Dr. Alan Blum is president of an organization called DOC which really stands for Doctors Ought to Care. And in essence, the organization is made of physicians who feel that healing the sick is fine, but they also have a duty to try and prevent that sickness by pointing out some of the major causes of disease, which can almost always be traced to certain bad health practices. Therefore, Blum feels it's a physician's duty to try and persuade the general public to stop some of these most unhealthful practices. Blum is a family physician who's a Morris Fishbein Fellow in Medical Journalism for the Journal of the American Medical Association. He said his concern about concentrating too little on prevention was heightened when he started speaking to groups of former drug addicts who are participating in a rehabilitation program. Here was a, a county drug rehabilitation program in which all these people were being given a second chance to reform and to overcome their serious addictive problems. And one thing struck me that they were very concerned about, about uh, questions regarding their health. And here were people that were, were not very healthy, were people that had abused their health. Uh, they, had, they were concerned about the sexual problems. They were concerned about drug problems. They were concerned about things like smoking, of all things. And I noticed that when I started off one day, there were about 35 individuals uh, Almost everyone in the room was smoking at the exact time I started. And uh, I happened to uh, um, start making some analogies between drug abuse and cigarette smoking, things that they hadn't really ever considered, things that I perhaps hadn't even made the analogy toward. And I noticed a stack of magazines um, and Playboy, Time, Newsweek, and I started passing them out and having them take a look at the only addiction in our society that is not only not discouraged but is actively promoted. Two addictions that seem to be actively promoted are smoking and drinking. In a short time, however, the addicts in their rehabilitation programs no longer smoked after they were in a session with Blum. So he said he thought that that sort of a prevention program might work on other people as well. The health awareness programs, however, that were being used in the area didn't seem to be very effective. I saw that there was a woeful lack of ethical health information. It mm -hmm. was basically the National Enquirer mentality, which is something that we tend to laugh at. And that really isn't something that should be laughed at, because it's not just about psychic puppies and how your salad reveals your personality. And um, the, the, the important thing about the National Enquirer is that that's about one-third of any given issue, health, health information. And he says that although he may not agree with all the material that's presented in the National Enquirer, it does have an approach that seems to be effective with many people, and there really is a great interest in health information. Blum had his first opportunity to argue about prevention and the merits and evils of cigarette smoking with an individual from the Tobacco Institute. This was on a radio program, and Blum says he felt he did a terrible job. Here, I wanted to talk about what I was seeing in the hospital every day, and what they wanted to talk about was this wonderful old custom that people have been using for thousands of years. And doctor, can't you allow people to have their little joys in life and so forth? Blum said that he soon realized that the people who won the debates were not those who raised their voices in indignation, but the very calm and smooth individuals like those from the Tobacco Institute. Those were the successful debaters. So in the interest of a prevent illness campaign, DOC was formed. Doctors ought to care. I think the ought is not a conditional. It's, a, it's an imperative because we're the ones who do care. We see what's going on, not just of smoking and drinking and poor nutrition, but the active promotion of these major preventable causes of death in our society. More tomorrow night on prevention on Focus 96.5 here on WFMR. This week on Focus 96.5, the topic is prevention, a special kind of health care. An ever-increasing number of physicians in this country seem to be putting a greater importance on prevention of certain health problems 
rather than simply dealing with a patient's disease once it occurs. Naturally, many physicians will also tell you that they're provided with little opportunity to prevent disease because the well person never even comes near them. This problem is somewhat aggravated in many instances by an individual's insurance program. For example, a woman who gets tested for cervical cancer once every year or two years will pay that $35 to $40 fee herself because she's simply getting a medical test as a matter of routine. Cervical cancer is the sort of cancer that's almost always curable with early detection. However, the person who ignores the recommended routine of a pap test and after going to a doctor for the first time in eight years is diagnosed as having advanced cervical cancer will have all her medical costs paid by that same insurance program because she's being treated for a disease. Dr. Alan Blum is a family physician who's president of a relatively new organization called DOC, Doctors Ought to Care. He was one of those people who got tired of seeing certain life-threatening diseases every day, which are avoidable for the most part for most people, providing they pay a certain degree of attention to maintaining a healthful lifestyle. Blum says that DOC is aimed at young people and teenagers, an attempt to make them aware of their choices to decide what they're going to do when they get a little older and how they're going to live their lives and maybe just possibly how they can help another individual in their communities. That's really what we're all about. We're not anti-drinking, anti-smoking, anti-teenage sex, anti-anything. I think we're very much uh, anti-ripoff, pro-health, you might say. Blum says that Doc feels that there are many institutionalized kinds of advertising that the organization doesn't believe in, and the intent is to fight the ads on their own terms. Doc purchases public service ads in order to put forth the organization's point of view, the same way most ads for most products put forth a viewpoint. One example, says Blum, is magazines aimed at pre-teenagers and teenage girls. He says that from the heavy promulgation of cosmetics ads, the message is you have to wear makeup, citing one slogan, most 12-year-olds no longer do their coloring with crayons. Makeup. You've got to have makeup ads in teenage magazines that are aimed to the 10 to 14-year-old. You've got to not show them anything that they can do to be satisfied with themselves as they are. You've got to make them try to be someone different, someone, in essence, like everybody else, but someone that Madison Avenue would have them be perceived as, as an individual. Blum also feels that when a corporation owns many subsidiaries, it's easy for one arm of a company to be involved in making a product that causes health problems for many people, while another arm makes a product designed to deal with some of those same health problems. Blum says that while this certainly was never the original intent of the company, the situation often now exists regardless. You have one hand, uh, the corporation owning the national outdoor company, the largest outdoor seller of alcohol and cigarettes on billboards, and the same company makes Thialair, a drug for patients who have lung problems. I have shares in the company, so I think I can be a, a critic because I think it's important that they divest themselves of this kind of, of absolute conflict of interest. Blum says that the general philosophy that's common and yet bad for people is the idea that complaints can be cured with a pill or any other number of items that are successfully promoted as the catalyst that turns a person's life around into success and health. Many people continue to search all their lives for that right catalyst while ignoring some basic principles for good health. What we're just talking about today is what Grandma knew all along. We're talking about good old moderation. I'm not saying don't smoke, don't drink, don't eat bad foods. I'm saying do anything you want in life. But do it moderately and do it with common sense. More tomorrow night with Dr. Alan Blum of DUC, Doctors Ought to Care, on Focus 96.5, here on WFMR. Dr. Alan Blum is president of DUC, an organization started by three doctors in 1977. The acronym stands for Doctors Ought to Care. Blum says that moderation is something that most people fail to practice and that one way to reduce medical costs is to improve the population's health. Blum said that DOC is feuding with such organizations as the American Cancer Society and the American Heart Association to try and make them give more attention to prevention, changing people's attitudes and not so much on research for cure. 
He says the public has an image of doctors as half producing wonder drugs and miracle cures and the other half coming down with malpractice suits. Somewhere in between is the kind of old-fashioned doctor approach where the physician gets to know the families, has time for them, and expects a bit from the patients, too. We know the major preventable causes of bad health and high medical costs. Some of the biggest concerns that Doc has is the very clever ads for establishment products that can really do people harm, like cigarettes and junk food. Although Blum's anti-cigarette commercials are famous for their approach, the 31-year-old Blum is no fan of marijuana either. People, unfortunately, have an idea. The verdict isn't in, that it really is much safer than smoking tobacco or that uh, it's not addictive. This is such hokum. Marijuana is one of the most potent drugs there is. It's a frightening future that we face if we go about uh, continuing to encourage through with it kind of jokes, through insensitivity to children. And if the people that write Saturday Night Live don't see that nine-year-old children are watching that, they, they better think again. Blum says that one of the things that concerns him is that the most effective form of education oftentimes is through commercials, advertising, and promotion. We're promoting a concept that you've got to get stoned, you've got to get behind the wheel, you've got to drive, and you've got to at least smoke a couple of joints when you go to a party. And, and it's a kind of, of backward mentality that has been foistered by people that have a great heavy stake in this. The high culture, without sounding prohibitionistic, outdoes any other corporate ripoff I can think of mm -hmm. in terms of literally giving you nothing in return for your dollar. As I drove Dr. Blum from the depot to our studios, he pointed to a billboard on Capitol Drive as he peered out the window and said, Oh, I missed it. What was that in the corner on the bottom of that sign? Responding dutifully like a good Milwaukee, and I said, well, I missed it, but let's go around the block and you can see it again. He looked at me and smiled and said, you missed it. That's exactly my point. Squeezed down in the lower corner of the billboard advertising a brand of cigarette appeared the Surgeon General's warning in small white letters. The proof of the pudding is when you deal with an issue like cigarette advertising, and you camouflage that hokey little warning at the, uh, by putting it on the bottom in a half an inch on a, on a full page ad, you're really saying you don't want people to get the small print. You don't want them to read the fine print in this society. Most advertising is not aimed at the consumer of that product. Most advertising, particularly for alcohol and cigarettes, is aimed at, at, at the individual like me, the individual like most, um, let's say, public radio listeners, uh, or classic music radio station types, public TV types, that are going to get angry about issues. But if they're treated in a certain fashion, if they're treated with pretty images, if they're treated with culture, they, they will ignore an issue. Mm -hmm. and, and most cigarette advertising is really aimed not to sell the product, but to buy off social acceptance, to make people believe that there's nothing anyone can do about it. Originally, smoking was considered socially daring for some, but there was no thought about ill effects. Opera singers would advertise lucky strikes and camels in the 1920s, saying, Smoking before I sing relaxes me and makes me sound my best. Blum says he is not trying to eradicate cigarettes or cigarette smoking, but he wants to see the other side, the dock side, express its view effectively, saying that doctors ought to care about the fate of young people at least as much as Pepsi-Cola or Philip Morris does. More tomorrow night on Focus 96.5 here on WFMR.